Hey everybody, this is GliderCat and it's time to play. Today we're going to start a let's play on a game called Trappist. This game is currently available on itch.io and it's going to be available on Steam March 1st, uh, 2024. Uh, this is like a space colony builder. I played this for a few hours and man, it has hooked me. The very beginning is a little choppy, but um, let's jump in and we'll see. Uh, we've got three options here, extra resources, normal and fewer. And the bottom sentence there says, this will make your start easier, but the game rules are unchanged. And so the game rules are unchanged for all of these. Um, but let's, let's do normal. Jump in here. We're gonna get some initial dialogues here. These are a little kind of, it can be a little distracting, but they won't last for super duper long. So let's go through it. Welcome to Trappist-1, our new home. The Ark is arriving in orbit around the desert planet. I'll take a closer look at the Ark to see how it has withstood the journey. Awesome. You can review the controls in the attached file. This file and any messages you receive can be reread at any time. Read the messages by clicking on the button in the top right corner. That's this guy up here. Good to know. What are the basics? Move the camera by holding any mouse button. Oops, let's see. Hold the mouse button and drag. That's that one. WASD, you just saw me do. Anything else? Rotate with Q and E. Boom. Scroll the mouse wheel for zoom. And then home key to get back to the Ark. The living spaces for the colonists were destroyed during our journey. Let's clear the arcology ruins from the Ark. Use the left mouse button to select the ships, buildings, planets, or anything else on the screen. Uh, when we recycle buildings, we recover the resources used in their construction. Select the arcology ruins and click the recycle button in the bottom right corner or press delete. Okay, we're gonna do that. Uh, one thing you'll notice, this is our Ark. It's moving around this, moving to this desert planet, and then it's going to start orbiting this desert planet. As you play this game, things will start moving off the screen. If you want them to stay on the screen, click on it, like I'm clicking on the arc. Then if I click this button down here, just mouse over it. It says, move the camera to the selected object and keep following it. Let's do that. Boom. And now the camera is going to track with the arc. That's just something that is um, handy to know as you start playing the game. They want us to find our ecology ruins on here and delete them. There's some exclamation points floating above these buildings. Let's click on one of them. Our ecology rune. This arcology was destroyed during the long voyage to Trappist. Recycle this building to return the building materials and provide room for a new habitat. And then they got a little quote here. Guaranteed to last any interstellar voyage. The advertisement for these. Of course, that wasn't true. So let's uh, recycle these. Boom. We get our materials back, and that goes for, I think, every building that we build in the game. If you deconstruct it, you get the resources back. So that is super cool. Kind of like that. All right, that should do it. Let's build some new habitats. Two habitats provide room for enough colonists to operate the Ark and to prepare for new colonies. Open the construction menu by clicking the button at the bottom left corner of the screen. That must be this guy. And from this menu, select a habitat and build one on a free spot. All right, <clears throat> so rotate a little bit. And under, what is this under actually? Utilities, we've got habitat. They want us to build two of these. Let's put them down here in this bottom corner. Boom. And I could have held shift, but I didn't. Uh, let's move over a little bit. Boom. And actually, that one's a little off. Let me um, see if we can put it exactly next to the other one. I'll zoom in and move over a little bit. Can I get this exactly next to it? it kind of floats around. As good as I can do. All right. Okay, we now have enough living space to start thawing colonists from the cryopods. Select a cryopod in the arc and the thaw button. I'm sure everyone will be delighted to see their new home. Okay, these are all the cryopods. A bunch of frozen people in here. We click on one of these and we hover over this icon. It shows us how many colonists are actually on the arc itself, unthawed, melted. <laughs> and then over here, it shows how many are in each cryopod, so 24 colonists in each one of those. And then it also shows us on the arc in total, there's 408 frozen people. We're just going to hit the play button until four of them thaw out. And we can see the number of colonists up in the top left. That's how many we have, how many we need. 
Once it gets to four, we're just going to pause this melting process. Boom. Okay, with enough colonists on the arc, we can operate all facilities. Our existing supplies will let us run the arc for quite a while. Rotate a little bit. Okay, the desert planet below looks like a safe bet to start our first colony. Any orbiting ship will survey the planet to find potential colony sites. Ships in orbit around a planet will automatically start surveying. Surveying reveals the locations of colonies and other interesting sites. Select one of the two cargo ships and right click on the planet to move the ship into orbit. Again, we're not going to have this tutorial for too much longer. But I'll click on one of the two cargo ships. They're identical. We've got one on either side of the arc. Click on this guy, right click on the desert planet. This guy's going to go orbit. And start scanning for points of interest for us to go check out. Take him a minute to do that. That little rocket ghost that shows up is in case we're far away, we know where to find our cargo ships. That's what that's all about. All right, we just got to wait for this guy to scan. You'll notice over in the top left of the screen, this is where our objectives are going to be once the tutorial's done. Uh, and then the messages here, if we click on the top right, here's all the dialogue we've seen, but under reports, this is where um, we can see reports and then the readme that shows us all the controls. We're going to get more reports as we survey planets. In fact, there's one that's probably going to pop up here in a second. We'll just wait for this guy to finish. Up top, you can see the supplies that we have available. I think this is all on the arc. We've got health drinks, oxygen, computer chips, steel beams, which are super duper important. Concrete is important. We can make that fairly easily. Steel's a little harder to make. Um, and then we've got a bunch of energy on the arc. 240 energy production. And we don't even, we're not using any of that yet. So that's awesome. And while we're waiting for this guy to survey, let's see what else is on the arc. There's a bunch of these cryopod. What's this? This guy, let's say what that is. Uh, there's a fusion reactor, nearly unlimited power from basic elements. Not sure what that one is. I think that's just like our, I don't know, like our colony hub or something. I don't see any kind of pop-up. All right, we're still surveying the desert planet. Let's go. There it goes. The desert planet has a breathable atmosphere, but most of the surface is too dry. And there's a report here. We'll go look at that in a second. We located a promising spot with underground water reservoirs or reserves. Let's uh, take a cargo ship for a closer look. Let's go. Okay, so they want us to take our cargo ship, which is in orbiting now, and just all we got to do is hover over where it says unexplored, anywhere where it says it, even on the little line here and right click, and that's gonna send our cargo ship down to the surface. And they will take us with it here in a second. Boom, there we go, we're landing. Okay, this spot looks like a great, or this looks like a great spot for our first settlement. We can build a colony hub and landing pad from the cargo ship. Okay, so I'll just go to the build menu here down at the bottom, boom. It automatically selected our colony hub. I'm going to move this over here. There's a little more open space here. Boom. Then they immediately put the landing pad on the cursor here. So I'll just drop that guy down too, right next to our colony hub. Boom. Okay. The first extrasolar colony is officially open for business. We can move a cargo ship to the landing pad to transfer goods. All right. Let's click on the colony on the um, cargo ship and just right click on the landing pad. Just once docked, click or drag on the concrete and steel beam icons to transfer building materials. Use the right mouse button to transfer more goods at once. Move the ship to the landing pad at the colony site and transfer the goods out of the ship. Okay, we don't have any goods on our ship. Uh, these three boxes are the cargo holds for our cargo ship. And then these are just the resources resource storage that's available on the planet, basically. So we need to send our cargo ship actually back to the Ark. We can do that with this button here, launch the cargo ship back to space. We'll send that guy back. I'll hit OK here. Now with our cargo ship docked 
at the arc, this is where we can start transferring resources. So these are the resources available on the arc, all these guys, and you can see the resource levels. So we've got 20 potatoes, 64 steel beams, helium, oxygen, water, concrete. I know what we're gonna need. We're gonna need concrete, we're gonna need steel beams. So let's take 30 of those. These are kind of precious as we'll see. And let's take all the concrete, er, well, 40 concrete, and then we're gonna want people down here too. So while we're up here on the arc, I'm gonna thaw out, <clears throat> I think eight people. So I'll click a cryopod, hit the play button. I'm gonna wait till the top left says eight people are thawed. I'm just gonna dismiss these messages. Does buildings that require um, or produce goods need to be within range? of the hub or a distribution center. From there, the drones will distribute goods. We'll see that in a minute. All right, I gotta go get to this guy and stop him. Uh, one more, I need one more colonist. Eight. All right, we've got eight colonists. Let me click this guy and anchor it. Back to our cargo ship. We got steel that's gonna come down. It's all loaded up, concrete's loaded up, and now I just wanna take eight people. And the way you do it is you click in here and then you drag down. And now we have eight colonists on the ship. With the colony, with the cargo ship selected, we're gonna right click on Haven. That's our new colony. And it's gotta go back down to the surface. It'll land on the landing pad this time. And now to transfer these materials, we can just click and drag down, click and drag down. Click and drag down. I can't do the people because there's nowhere for them to, to live. So let's build pioneer camps. This, each one of these will hold eight people. We'll see that here in a second. Let's see if I can zoom in. Looks like we're in the middle of a sandstorm or something here. I'd like to get this lined up somewhat. That'll do. That's not perfect, but that's all right. So if I click on that, it shows this building holds zero out of eight colonists. So let's, now we have a place to, for colonists, so I can unload them from the cargo ship. Click and drag down. Boom. So now, okay, we, with enough habitats set up, we'll be able to live and work on this planet. We should continue to thaw colonists and bring them to the colonies as long as we have enough potatoes and water. So there's a big hint. We need to grow potatoes and water. In fact, they're already complaining that the colonists on Haven don't have enough supplies. Colonists need air, drink, and food to survive. Different colonies will have different needs. Select any habitat to see the list of needs for that colony. Providing sufficient goods will result in a happy and growing colony. All right, we need potatoes, so let's go to construction and resources. In fact, we need both of these things, potatoes and water. Let's do water first. It shows it's going to cost us four steel beams. It's going to chew up two energy. We don't have any energy on the planet yet, so that's another thing we're going to have to do. But let's do potatoes. We'll get these down. Uh, in fact, let's do the water pump first, just because I kind of have an idea how I want this to space out. Let's put water pump first. Potato farm over here, maybe. And then we need power. So I think that's what they're telling us about. Buildings require energy. Those buildings within range, blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna hit okay to get these out of my way. Okay, we'll have to unless we continue learning more about our new home. Okay, fine. We've got water, we've got potatoes. What we don't have is power. We're short two power and we're sh we have four extra people. Let's get power under resources. Nope, under utilities. Got a couple options for power. We got solar panels. Those take silicon. We're not, we don't have silicon yet. And we've got windmills. These take steel beams. They produce eight energy. Let's put one of these guys down. Boom. Now, if we look at the top left of the screen, we can see our energy level where we've got six surplus energy. We've got three extra people that aren't currently working. We've got our first potato that hasn't been eaten is in inventory. And we should have water pumping here. So to figure out how much water and potatoes we need, if we click on the habitat, just 
dismiss that for now. Let me just dismiss these messages because they're kind of distracting. But we can continue to grow the colony by moving colonists from the Ark. Larger colonies can support more advanced buildings. We can build a concrete factory to produce more building materials. That's probably what we'll do Go through these. And then I'll get back to what I was going to explain. At time, we might find another suitable location for a second colony on this planet. And we can survey other planets in the solar system as well. Very cool. Yeah, if you want to know how much water and how many potatoes you need to grow, if I click on my colony, or the Pioneer Camp, uh, it's going to show me what they need. In this case, they need oxygen. Right now, this planet that we're on provides oxygen. These are the characteristics of the planet that we're on, or at least this site. So it shows it's a haven. We've got Earth-like gravity. We've got oxygen. We've got carbon dioxide, which is necessary for plants. We've got a bunch of sand, and we have the ability to get water. But to see how much our colony needs, it says every hour, each colonist consumes four water. And that's a total consumption of 0.47 per minute. So that's how much water we need to provide for our colonists at this point in time. We have eight on the surface. Or no, we have more than that. No, we only have seven. Is there another one sitting on here? I thought I brought eight. I only brought seven. Um, but again, hovering over the water will show us how much we need, 0.47 per minute. And if we click on the water well, and hover over one of these, it shows us this is getting us two water per minute. So we're four times the water we need. So we're in good shape there. Same thing on the potatoes. We need 0.47 per minute. And our potato farm is going to get us four potatoes every minute. So we're in good shape on food and water. We're in good shape on energy. Now what? They mentioned um, Starting to produce some building materials, so let's look at that. One, actually, before we do that, I said we were going to look at the report. Here's the survey report when we sent the shuttle, the um, cargo ship, to survey the planet. Here's what they came up with: survey report for Trappist One E Desert Planet. That's one we're on. Early on in the astronomical surveys, Trappist One E was identified as a promising candidate for colonization. It is located squarely in the center of the wild, <laughs> the wide Goldilocks zone of Trappist One. The initial survey found a dry, sand-covered planet. Closer observations revealed the remains of a past biome. Archaeological studies confirm the existence and rapid disappearance of a more complex ecological system within the recent geological history of the planet. Although there is little water on the surface, underground reservoirs should be able to sustain a rich agricultural colony. When the first images of the sand dunes appeared on the Ark's net, Discussion sparked among the scientists. Should we call this planet Dune or Arrakis? Eventually, it was agreed to call it Desert Planet and postpone further discussion until we encounter an actual sandworm. That's a little humor there, reference to Dune. That's where you can see the little reports talking about what the planet uh, survey resulted in. Let's build something. Um, we look at what we can build. We've got solar panels. I mentioned we don't have silicon yet, so we can't do that. Storage depot. This transports resources between buildings and increases colony storage. Takes computer chips, which we have some up on the Ark. But this guy has an area of effect, and this is basically like um, drones that will automatically transfer resources between the different buildings. Um, and it's got a pretty wide range of effect. You'll see there's another circle here over our colony hub. And if we look real close, you'll see there are actually drones doing their thing already. So this guy's taking potatoes and moving them into storage. This storage depot says it also increases our overall colony storage. So that's what that is. We don't need that yet. Landing pad we have. Pioneer camp we have. Uh, we've got one windmill so far. Under factories, we've got a couple options here. A silicium smelter, which basically is going to take sand and make silicon. And we want that silicon for solar panels. We have concrete factory. Uh, we want the concrete factory. Sure. Let's get that put down here somewhere. It's going to help us produce building materials, not only for this colony, but for other colonies. I mean, that guy is going to need sand. If we go to resources, we've got a new one here. Sand pit. Extract sand from the desert. There's plenty. 
takes two concrete to build it and it needs four colonists and two energy to run it. Let's get one of these placed down. We're going to have to go get more colonists. So we're five colonists short and we're just even on the energy. Let's go take our shuttle and go back to the Ark. We'll get some more colonists. In fact, we'll get a lot of colonists. I'm going to start thawing them now. Let's maybe take like 16 colonists down if we can. Then anchor the camera here and let's see, is there anything else we want to take? We saw we would need computer chips if we wanted to build that drone bay or whatever. Don't think we need it yet. I want to save these chips till we can make them ourselves. I'm going to wait till that we get 16 surplus colonists. We may run out of room. Yeah, we have 16 habitats available right now. We have 16 people, so I need to move 12 people into the sh cargo ship. And then we'll wait till there's four more thaw out. And then we'll pause this guy. Boom. How many do we have left in here? Zero. Okay, that cryopod is now empty. Let's take the other four pokes. Set up the 16. And more building materials. I think we're good to go. We're producing our own water down there. We're going to start producing concrete soon. Let's head back down. Go to Haven. And right now we're just bringing workers down to work on the sand pit and the cement factory. So unload these guys. Of course, I can't do it because I don't have places for them to live. So let's get a couple more of these pioneer camps put down. These guys a place to live. I could have held the shift and just built those a little faster, but that'll do. All right, unload these guys. <clears throat> now let's see what the situation looks like. Sky is waiting on sand. We've got one sand pit. The workers just started working on that. We'd like to produce silicon too. So let's, um, we still have some building materials down here. Let's get another sand pit going. Damn, I'll try to keep it within range of that circle. Hopefully that's going to work. Sure, why that one's got an exclamation point. This guy, I think, is waiting on resources. Yeah, he's waiting on sand. What's the problem with you? Energy. Yeah, we're short on energy now. We're gonna have to build another wind turbine. Let's do it up here. Hopefully, I have enough building materials. I do. Now we've got six extra energy available to us. Look at the potatoes 24 potatoes. So we're doing great there. Water is climbing slowly. We're probably going to need another water pump because um, the concrete factory is using some water too. This guy uses two con two. I don't know where is it. Yeah, two water every minute. So we're up to two water a minute there, and these guys want one point five three per minute. So three and a half water per minute, and our water pump is doing two. So we definitely need another water pump. Let's get that built. Boom. <clears throat> now how are we doing? 10 steel left, 14 concrete. Potatoes are awesome. Water should start climbing. Keep an eye on that for a second. We've got five extra workers and a little bit of extra power. Curious about the water. Just went down to four. Hoping that starts climbing. Hoping that starts climbing. The next thing we want to make. We look at factories. We've only got one more thing. The silicon smelter. Let's um let's punk that down over here. Hopefully we have enough power to run this thing. Just barely. Getting low on resources. Water did climb by one. This guy, what does it take? This takes two silicon or it takes four sand every minute. How much do these guys produce? These guys kick out two sand. Oh man. And how much power do these guys use? 
Two energy. This guy's waiting on sand. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more of these sand pits, right? So in the top left, we do have a new objective. It says grow haven to 60 population. Um, yeah, we got to bring more people down. We're going to need more concrete. Let's see what it takes to build a pioneer camp. Four concrete. We have nine available to us. Um, we know we're going to need more sand pits, though. That's kind of the next thing I want to build. But I want to start moving over to solar power. Hmm. I think what I might do... Might shut down our concrete factory for just a little bit. I want all of that sand to go towards making this silicon from these two sand pits because the silicon is going to allow us to make the solar panels. Um, those produce six energy. They cost four silicon. The wind turbines produce a little more energy, but they're using up four steel beams. We can't make steel yet. It's going to be a little while before we can, um, but if we can get more solar panels down or get solar panels down, we can deconstruct these and use that steel for other things. Um, where is it? Resources. Yeah, energy and colonists. So let's hang out here for a second. I'll click on the colony hub. We've got two silicon. We have four surplus energy. As soon as we get two more silicon, then we can build our first solar panel. So let's hang out for a second. While, while we're waiting, actually, let's go out to the planet view. Here's the system we're in. There are a bunch of other planets that we can go explore. In fact, we can actually do that now, I think. I'll show you, show you, show you. Just like we surveyed our own planet. Let's take our second cargo ship here and go right click on one of these planets. Go way out here. And actually, we can survey these moons on some of these planets, too. Let's do this guy. I'm just going to right-click. Going to send our cargo ship out. Fortunately, these guys, I don't think they use fuel. I don't think. Oh, trade routes. Look at that. Um, I don't know how I got that to come up. But uh, apparently, we can set up. Yeah, look at that. We can set up trade routes. Oh, man. That's going to be key. Just learned about that feature. That's really going to be important for us. Because certain planets have certain resources. Like, we're going to settle an area that doesn't have access to water, so we're going to have to ship the water in. Guy's starting his scan. Let's go back to Haven. I'm going to click the home button on my keyboard. And I'm going to hit escape to make sure I don't have the cargo ship selected. And then I'm just going to go to Haven. Do we have our four? Yeah, we do. We've got five silicon. Let's put down a solar panel. Boom. And utilities, solar panel. And these I don't think need to be in range of where the drones are. If I move this way over here, and you look at the energy display up top left, it says plus four. If I drop this guy down, boom. Now we're plus 10. And if I want, I can take down one of these. Turbines now. We have extra power. I'm going to leave them up for the moment. I'd like to get another... I'd like to get at least one more solar panel up. I may wait till this gets to four. And then I want to get another sand pit going. Um, and it needs to be in range of all this other stuff. Let's see. Resources. Sand. We have the colonists, we have the concrete, we have the energy. I guess we should just drop this down. Let's put it up here, maybe. There's something weird with the building placement, how it kind of floats around. There should be room right there, come on. Uh, let's rotate the camera, maybe that's part of the issue. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to place there. Uh, we can go over here, I suppose.
Rotate. Okay, we got our survey results. Our survey found indications of helium-3 deposits on Rocky 2, the second moon planet of Planet X. We also noticed some anomalies in the gravitational field. Okay, so let's look at the report, see what that says. The second of two small moons orbiting TRAPPIST 1H, the regolith on this small moon is rich in helium-3, enough to power our fusion reactors. That's what the um, what our arc is using for fuel. There are also some anomalous readings that are worth investigating. Okay, that's our report. Let's go take a closer look. Back out of here. I think we can now send our cargo ship down to the surface where it says unexplored. Let's do that. Boom. And just see what they show us. Okay, this looks quite a bit different. Let's see what it says about it up top. This site is called the Dig. It's got Earth-like gravity. It's a vacuum. So a lack of an atmosphere requires most buildings to be sealed, and our colonists require a supply of oxygen. So we either need to... Yeah, we need to... Either find a way to produce oxygen or ship it over here. Got helium-3 as a resource. Harvested from the surface of the airless moons and asteroids. Okay. And then it's got ice gravel. So our colony here can have water, but we're going to have to bring oxygen if we settle here at some point. Let's go back into space. Oh, where's our little cargo ship? Did I not just say come back out? You. Back into space. And I'm going to click him and have him survey this other moon. Let's right click on him. You can do that. We'll go back to our work. Back here on Haven. Should have enough um, silicon now for another solar panel. So let's do that. Look. Okay, we've got eight, so we can build two more solar panels. Let's do it. Uh, where are you? Construction menu. Utilities. Solar. Be those way out here. Boom. Someday I'll remember to hit the shift button. But not today. So now we're plus 20 on energy. I'm going to recycle at least one of these turbines because I know I want the steel. So let's recycle that guy. And now we've got three sand pits. Do I have enough energy and stuff? Can I put the concrete factory back on? Uh, let's do it. We're short a worker. Got plenty of energy. We're short a worker. We're now going to start producing concrete. I actually like another sand pit. I think. Put on water. Let's, uh, let's double check water levels. Concrete factory is using two water. And our colonists are using 1.53. We have production of four. This guy, I think, is crying because we don't have um, enough workers. They took it from the water pump. We're going to go get more workers. In fact, let's send our cargo ship back. Boom. Okay. This report, we got a new report. We located an iron ore deposit and ice gravel on Rocky 1, the inner moon of Planet X. Uh, we can smelt iron ore for steel to build more factories. That's what we want, steel, desperately. Let's look at the report. This is the first of two small moons orbiting TRAPPIST 1H. There are pockets of iron and ice close to the surface. Iron will be useful to create additional building materials. Yes, yes, indeed. That is going to be good. I have yet to make iron. I did a little playthrough before hitting record here, but I didn't get to build iron. I'll hit OK there. Let's go back to that planet if I can find it. Oh, I guess that still says unexplored until we maybe until we put our colony down. Interesting. Uh, let's go to Rocky One's little unexplored area. Boom. See what we discover here. Looks very similar to the other moon, right? This one, this site is called Outland. Earth-like gravity. Most forms of agriculture will work best under conditions. Okay, that's fine. Vacuum, so we got to bring oxygen here. We have a source of water, and we have a source of iron ore. 
Very cool. I guess we can settle. Let's put something down. It's like this is probably the place. If I scroll to the left, that's the end of the building area. If I scroll to the right, boom. So you can kind of see how big the site is, how far you can expand. Um, but there can be multiple sites per um, planet. I'm not sure if it's per moon, too, or not. Let's pick a spot that's got some open space. Looks like right here is fine. Boom. Then we'll drop this landing pad. Apparently, these don't cost any resources to put down, so we'll do it. Boom. Okay, there are large iron and ice deposits for us to mine. We can create much-needed construction materials with the iron, and the ice can be melted into water. Okay, very good. You, I'll send over here just for the heck of it. I'm going to send you back to space. Maybe I'll let this guy keep surveying things. Let's have him actually survey the main planet here. <clears throat> and then I'll tell you what, I think that'll be the end of this first episode. Again, this is a game called Trappist. It releases on Steam March 1st. Not sure if that's going to be an early access release or a full release. But man, this game is pretty darn cool, as we're going to see more and more. Um, before we do go, let's just check out Haven one last time. Oh yeah, we got to bring workers. So that we'll do that next episode. In fact, look at potatoes are maxed out. We might be able to bring another, what is it? 30 to 37 more people we need for, to meet this population goal. I guess the thing holding us back might be concrete. We need to build, yeah, we need to build several of these little habitats. How much concrete do we have? 14. We may need to borrow some from the, um, we need to borrow some from our arc. Look at this. We've got eight silicon. We might steal that silicon for now and use it to build solar panels in a new, for a new colony. But we'll do, we'll get to all that stuff next episode. We'll make those decisions then. Yeah, that's it for this one. This is GladderCat saying thanks so much for watching. I want to thank GladderCat patrons and channel members for their support of the channel. Deeply, deeply appreciated. I hope you guys enjoy this series on Trappist. Again, I think this is a super cool game. I'll put links to the, um, the Steam page and the Itch.io page and all that good stuff. I don't think there's a Discord, and I don't think they're planning on starting a Discord. So that could change. But uh, if I do become aware of a Discord link, I'll put it in. But as of right now, I don't think there is one. Yeah, that's it for now. I will see you all in the next episode.